All right, welcome in to uh, another edition of College Hockey Southwest Weekly. Tom Callahan is back with me. The back is better. You're off the IR. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's tough, man. You get up there sometimes. <laughs> IR calls. You got to go on it for a week. So it happens. Tom, it's been an exciting first ten games for uh, Arizona State University. Yeah. They're now seven three and zero, coming in with uh, Michigan State this weekend. Your thoughts, first of all, recap in Penn State. What do you think of the series? I thought it was great for Arizona State. I mean, anytime you get a split on the road, and uh, as you and I were talking about just before we jumped on here, could have been a sweep. Maybe yeah. should have been a sweep. And that's, you know what, that, that first game, that's a learning curve thing for this team. As they mature, as they get better, uh, they learn to hold leads. They learn how to buckle it down defensively. They figure out how to take care of things like that. Sometimes you got to lose those games to take that step forward eventually because now, you know, coach gets to say, okay, let's take a look at what we did, what we didn't do more importantly, and why it got away. And then they come out the next night and a big win. So I'll tell you what, I think that is a huge confidence builder. You know, and we talk about that on the road. If you can go on the road and split and sweep some games at home, that's where you get the numbers. And the numbers I'm talking about is I think we all know it's got to be a 20-win season to even get considered for the national tournament. Right. So you got 34 games to do it in. Um, as I look ahead, and I try not to look too far ahead, but before we get to this Desert Classic here in, in December, I think this team's got a chance to be a 12-14 team win. It, you know, it, it could. And, it, I mean, you show up so strong against Penn State, that's a tough opponent. Right. You know, Michigan State is another tough opponent. I mean, this is this is not an easy schedule. We talk about this all the time. Um, but right now you're sitting at 7-3. and three. You're in good shape. And I think, again, it's that learning curve. This is going to be the season that builds the foundation for ASU hockey down the road. Are there going to be some disappointments? Absolutely. Are they going to blow some leads? Sure they are. That's hockey. But that's what you learn from. You know, and how important would it be for hockey all over the way, all over the not in the West, but all over the country, to see an independent play well enough to earn a tournament bid. I think it'd be great, and you know what, it would focus a very bright light on this program, but it would also encourage some of the other programs that are trying to make some inroads, maybe towards going Division One, especially in the Southwest region. Hey, this can be done, and look at the success that ASU is having. Let's take a quick look at the pairwise. I know you took a glance at it right before we came on. Tell us where Arizona State stands in the pairwise. They are tied for seventh, and uh, I think that's tremendous at this point of the season. Early on, Scott, we talked about how you know they were up there, and, and they have played 10 games to this point of the season. Seven wins is pretty good. Uh, and you know, early on, okay, they were, they were up there a little higher, but now they're staying up there. Right. Uh, and that's, to me, the more impressive thing. They are... And I don't know if this is a season where perhaps a Penn State or a Michigan State or an Ohio State might look past them a little bit, but this is still a really good hockey team. Um, I don't. The longer the season goes, they will catch no one by surprise because right. the word will get out. Yeah. So, but for them to be where they are, tied seventh right now, I think is tremendous. Staying in the top ten would be a major accomplishment. And we talk about who they're tied with for that spot. Give us the, the, the results of that one. Well, I, uh, maybe I should ask you <laughs> to give us the results of that one. Uh, Minnesota Duluth, uh, that's that's pretty heady company. And Penn State, who they just split with this weekend on the road, is actually behind them in the rankings. So, yeah, as is Michigan State. As is Michigan State, who's coming in this weekend. So, uh, yeah, it's it's you don't want to read too much into that. Uh, you know, you don't want to believe your own press and get too overhyped about it. But don't look past the fact that these guys are playing great hockey right Right now, this is a very good hockey team. Coming back home to play Michigan State, it's going to be a big, loud series here at Oceanside again. Um, it seems like every weekend we're talking about a big series, but it really is, isn't it? Well, and th again, that's the way the schedule sets up, is that every series this year is a big one, and it's going to be an important one for ASU. There's not much in the way of breaks. Uh, they don't get to take their foot off the gas. They've got to keep it going the whole time. And, Scott, I think that's why, again, this is going to be such a huge season towards moving this program forward. It's going to be a challenging one every time out. Tom, we'll, uh, we'll step away for a minute. We'll bring in a guest, and we'll, uh, we'll talk a little more college hockey in the desert southwest. Sounds good. All right, we're visiting in with Brinson Pashnik here in the College Hockey Southwest Weekly. And Brinson, you guys are off to a 7-3 start. Did you see this coming early in the year? Um, 
Honestly, yeah. I mean, I knew the talent we had coming in, the talent we had still here. And, you know, our schedule was tough the first eight games of the season, or actually ten games of the season. But I remember literally having a conversation with Coach Hicks um, right before the season started, and we were just going through our schedule. And we're like, you know, we can definitely go six and two these first uh, first eight games. Um, and that's, that's what we did. Yeah. We followed the game plan. <laughs> Um, and now we're seven and three, hoping to be, uh, you know, nine and three this weekend. And I think that's a very real possibility. You know, I talk to the freshmen in your locker room, and I tell them, you guys are all coming. All of you guys have come from successful programs, but these guys are coming in from winning programs right now. You guys have had to endure a little bit, taking your lumps at the uh, NCAA level. Yeah. How's the locker room mesh, and what have you done as a captain to kind of <laughs> mesh this whole group together and make them all winners? Yeah, the locker room's fun. Um, you know, I think for the first year. Um, since I've been here, it truly feels just like a family atmosphere. Guys will do anything for each other. Um, I think we had that in the past, but not to this extent. I mean, just look at uh, like Dom and Steen um, selling out to block a shot with 10 seconds left, and we were up seven, <laughs> seven two or whatever. Like that's that's what it takes. They're just selling out and putting everything they have on the line. And me as a captain, I'm just uh, you know trying to encourage everyone and just love on guys like. It's my job to pick guys up. It's my job to um, to show them how much I love them. It's all my job to critique them. You know, that's a coach's job. Um, I believe I'm just there to just love on them. You know, you and I talked this summer. I know about your faith. I know about what you've been through and, and how you've changed your life. And the rewards are starting to be reaped here a little bit. You guys are uh, one vote away from number 20 <laughs> in the poll. I heard you saying earlier that you're, you're a little bit shocked that you weren't in there. I am as well. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit, though, about your defensive partner, Josh Maniscalco. Mm -hmm. You guys, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I noticed a couple of weeks ago that the comfort level between you two took another leap. Yeah. Am I right on that? No, you're 100% right. Um, yeah, I don't know. We just really clicked from the start of the year. Um, I think we definitely uh, just feed off each other's game. You know, we're both offensive, but um, we both pick our spots when we're out there with each other. and. You know, I really think it helps that we're, we're really good friends. You know, we're best friends. Um, we hang out a lot, so I think we just grow off the ice as well. You know, I'm really grateful that you, God sent him to this team. Um, you know, he has a strong faith too, so it's kind of it's kind of funny how right. um, two Christians being D partners. So uh, I love that. Um, yeah, I loved uh, I loved playing with Willie last year too. You yeah. know, he was an awesome D partner. I had a lot of fun with him too. Um, and, you know, I'm really happy with Josh as well. So it's been fun. You know, I talked to Coach about how difficult it is to get on this, this roster, this game roster, right? It, it's a battle for everybody to get into that lineup. What's it like as a, as a captain of these guys to, to keep encouraging those guys that aren't there? I mean, I watched uh, one of your defensive partners, or not partners, but defenseman in Max Balance, and yeah. before and after and during, he's given it 110% like everybody, but he really wants to get in yeah. that lineup. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the hardest job for me as a captain is just like, Truly making sure the guys know that they're not doing anything wrong, like uh, Connor Stewart and Max Balance, and yeah. you know they haven't gotten the lineup, and you know they're working so hard, and I see that work ethic every day, and I, and I'm talking to them, and I know how much they care about um, this team and how they're not giving up, and that's where I'm just trying to encourage them and tell them like, just keep going, like you will get your shot, and I know you guys will make and take full advantage of it when you do get your shot. It's just keeping them. Uh, kind of confident, I guess, um, in their game. And, you know, they're good hockey players, and I don't ever want them thinking they're not because they're not getting in the lineup. Speaking of good hockey players, your brother Steen is, is taking a major step and getting a lot of playing time mm -hmm. and working real hard as well. Talk a little bit about that relationship. I know you guys are close. And, mm -hmm. and tell me about his effort this year and how happy you are for him. Yeah, I mean, just coming from freshman year, like it was a dream come true, us both committing here. Um, it was so cool. And, and freshman year, I think we both kind of played a lot, but um, then he ended up getting hurt freshman year. Yeah. And last year, he was in and out of the lineup. Um, so this year has just been so cool and such a blessing that, uh, you know, God's given us both opportunity to play out there. And I miss watching him run around and, and <laughs> hit some people pretty hard. It's, it, it's fun. I love that line he's on there. They're fun to watch. Brinson, I appreciate your time. Good luck this last weekend, and good luck against Michigan State. Let's keep getting home sweeps, yeah. and we'll take road splits. Yeah. And in the end, we'll sort it all out and see if we're in a national tournament. How about exactly. That? Thank you. <laughs>
All right, welcome in to uh, the final episode, final edition of uh, College Hockey Southwest Weekly for this week. Tom Callahan's with me. We had Brinson Pashnuk in. Nice to talk to the captain a little bit. We're uh, still working on a segment that I hope uh, one of the uh, supporters, one of the biggest supporters, made the trip to Penn State, uh, Mike McNally. So I'm hoping I can tape a segment with Mike and get it in, in here as well. But uh, he's unfortunately got a real job. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's a crippler to your hockey habit. If you have a real job, it's very tough to watch all the games all the time. I found that. Well, and as we tape this, it's election day, right? So yes. he's got extra duty. He's up at Scottsdale Community College where he's doing his full-time AD job, and they have him doing some election duties as well. So we're going to say that he missed this episode because he's serving his country. Is that fair? Okay, you can go with that. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. So let's wrap things up by talking a little bit about what's coming up. We talked a little bit yeah. about Michigan State. Um, what do you know about Michigan State? What do you expect to see from them when they get down here this week? Well, as we talked about at the top of the show, the pairwise rankings, they're slightly behind Arizona State. And, Scott, uh, when we talk about the pairwise, I mean, it, I'm sure most people might know, but not everybody does. Um, that is a, not necessarily the poll. Right. That's that's different from the poll, but the pairwise um is, is pretty accurate in determining maybe who's going to get an invite uh, to the tournament towards the end of the year. And it's through uscho.com, um, United States College Hockey Online. Uh, so if you've never visited that site, in addition to visiting Absolutely. ours, yeah. I would highly <laughs> recommend checking that out. Um, but so, so it's a little bit of, it's a nice indicator because it takes into account all kinds of different factors. And I think strength of schedule is one of the best things ASU has going for it. Um, and when you look at Michigan State, again, this is a team right behind them in the pairwise not going to be a pushover. Uh, I was a little interested earlier in the show. You said, I think we're going to sweep them at home. I, I think it's going to be tough, but in Michigan State's a tough out. I mean, historically, this has been a very good program. Uh, they've had excellent goaltending, and they play a tough style of game. But I, I continue to be impressed by what I see from the Sun Devils this year. I really am, and it's hard to understate that for me. These kids continue to impress me every time out. I, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm... <laughs> I, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic heading into the weekend. And that's the question I wanted to ask you. I've been here for three and a half years, right? I've been with these guys since they were a club team and seen what they've done. You've had a chance to step in now a little bit more. I've been here a few weeks since the start of the season. Had a chance to see this team at practice, play some games. And you just told us how you felt about them. But what have you noticed about this team? What what shocked you the most when, when I said, come help me cover Arizona State hockey? So it started with the Ohio State weekend. Right. Um, I thought Ohio State would maybe run them over a little bit more than they did, and they didn't. They stood up to Ohio State. But what strikes me most about the Sun Devils is that they have a system, they stick to it. Yeah. Um, they're very together as far as the way their power play runs. Their penalty kill has been awesome. I love watching the PK, but they're very disciplined on it. Um, there's not a lot of, you know, over pursuit. There's not a lot of uh, getting out of position, and that's good coaching. Yeah. Um, and that's also having kids willing to execute the system because not everybody wants to do that. They're, you, you know, you talk to these kids every week and you say the same thing. You've always been a winner. You've always been a winner. Well, yeah, they have. And a lot of them have always been the special one, right. you know, the, yeah. the good one, the, the one who stands out. Everybody is that kid in their program. Yep. Uh, and then as you get higher and higher and higher, you're playing against all those same kids who were the special one in their program. And so now you start to weed yourself out. Those kids don't always want to buy in. They don't always want to play the system. Uh, we see it in the NHL. Yep. Uh, it goes all the way up to the NHL. Not everybody wants to play the system. And so to see the buy-in here has been probably the most single unique thing that stood out to me. They really buy into what Coach Powers is, is teaching and preaching, and, and it's showing up on the scoreboard. For those people that are not used to watching NCAA hockey, you've watched AHL hockey, you've covered NHL hockey, what can you tell a fan to come out and see? What are they going to see when they see NCAA hockey at this level? Uh, I think, uh, and one of the things that struck me, my very first college hockey game that I saw was in Lina Rink in Cornell. Right. And I actually went in there to cover that game, interestingly enough. It was the first time I'd sat down for a real uh, D1 college hockey game. Um, and what 
struck me was the speed of the game. Yeah. I didn't think it'd be that fast. Uh, and it is. It's pretty quick. And some of these kids run around like wrecking balls out there. They just want to run everything over. Right. They, they want to play physical. And um, you don't see that as much because a pro season's a little longer. It's a little more measured. Guys, you know, um, play double the games, essentially. So there's a little more body management, if you will. But here you've got basically a 35, maybe 40-game season everybody's going flat out a lot. And so I think the pace of the game is consistently higher, um, and it's it's very entertaining because of that. I'm going to finish it up on a college hockey note, not NCAA, but you and I were both. You had the opportunity to call the game between the NHL alums and the club team, the ACHA D1 team. I know Coach uh, Berman hates the word club, so I'm going to throw that out. Coach, it didn't happen. Right. Um, <laughs> but, but you had the chance to see them play. I know it was an exhibition. How big of a difference is it from ACHA D1 to NCAA hockey, in your opinion? It's it's a pretty good leap. Um, the University of Arizona is a good ACHA team, uh, and uh, it was actually a lot of fun, that yeah, game, yeah. by the way. That was a lot of fun to see some of those veteran NHLers skate. It was funny. I saw Nick Axelby, and I'm like, I called games for this guy when he was with Atlanta. I remember that. <laughs> uh, and actually, the TV voice now, the Coyotes, Matt McConnell, was the TV voice of the <laughs> right. Thrashers then. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of – hockey is such a small world. <laughs> it really is. But uh, it, was, it was fun to see – um, but even the veteran NHLers, I mean, show the kids, you know, yeah. that there's a gap there. Yeah, right. um, and there's a lot of things you have to work on. And so the execution is what's different. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the kids at the ACHA level, maybe one's a great skater, but doesn't have the hands. Maybe one is, uh, you know, an exceptional vision guy, but, but doesn't necessarily have the speed or the size or the strength. Um, that's the difference in the step up is there's more tools available to the players at an NCAA level. They have more of the package together. And then when you make the jump from college to the pros, there's even more tools together for those guys. Right. And so that's really what the difference can be when it comes down to um, going to make that jump from ACHA, which University of Arizona wants to do yep. uh, to yep. make that jump to D1. And it's it's talent level. That's what a lot of the difference is and in, in the number of tools that you have in your toolbox, if you will. All right, final question for you, and then we'll, uh, we'll round out this segment. But you've also had a chance to not only watch NCAA players, but you've had a chance to watch NCAA coaches. You know, you had the privilege of sitting underneath my rafter seat a yes. couple weeks ago for uh, UNO here. What's your thoughts on Coach Powers, his staff, and the job that he's doing with this program from a startup phase to where they are right now? You know what's interesting? Every coach has their own style. Yeah. Um, and listening to them communicate with the referees, with the players, with the with the coaches back and forth on the bench. Communicate. That's um, a great word you're using. Yes. It, <laughs> well, it is because, you know, everybody has their own style of getting their point across. But actually, one of the things that impressed me much, uh, most about Coach Powers was um, he's never really getting too bent out of shape. Yeah. You know, he's not one of those guys who's flying over the boards, throwing sticks on the ice. I mean, maybe, <laughs> and if he does, maybe he's got one eruption in there somewhere. I don't know. But, um, you know, that... That's a thing that keeps your team on an even keel. Right. Uh, and I think that that translates down. It's a top-down message. And when guys see, hey, you get in a tight spot, you don't lose your cool, that goes down through the bench. That permeates the team. And I think that that was one of the things I noticed just sitting above that bench. Even when things really weren't going their way, I didn't hear a lot of screaming, a lot of shouting, a lot of blame. Uh, it's just, all right, guys, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. Now let's go do it. That's exactly why we love Oceanside Ice Arena. I know you'll be back this weekend for a Saturday game. Yep. I'll be here for both of them, and we'll touch base again next week on College Hockey Southwest Weekly.